What up, what up, what up, everybody? Colton Redicore, back out with another video. This one's gonna be another collection video, and it's gonna be my first collection video of 2019. I've got a couple comments uh, suggesting to do some of my other collections that are not as big, but um, I still have some games for, so I'm gonna start uh, going through all the other game systems that I haven't covered yet in my other videos from last year. And some of the ones that I have a smaller collection for like only a couple of games for all combined together with uh, other game systems from the same company in order to make the videos a little longer. To keep it fresh from last year, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the game and then give you a quick rating out of 10 of like what I think of the game of in general and what I would give it um, in terms of a rating. If you guys like this new format, definitely let me know. Uh, or you just rather me talk about the games and uh, what I think about not doing the whole number rating system. Alright, coming in first, we got Fight Club. Uh, this is one I actually haven't played yet. I uh, picked this one up at a thrift store. Uh, it cost me, I think, $3. So, I'm hoping it will be decent. It just looks like a one-on-one um, -on -one, like fighting game, kind of from a 2D playing perspective. Uh, I guess they're going for kind of their version of Death Jam, uh, but just using the Fight Club uh, movie licensing. Alright, next up is the Hitman Trilogy. Uh, so this one comes with Hitman uh, Contracts, Hitman 2, and Hitman Blood Money. I haven't played through these fully myself yet, but I've played through a bit of each game, and Hitman's a classic stealth franchise. Um, I would definitely, probably from what I've played, give these games a solid like eight they're definitely some of the better stealth games out there and it's been around forever so it's it's a classic for a reason all right next up is hot shots golf 3 um as i've said in multiple videos countless videos uh hot shots is one of my favorite um game series of all time and i think is one of the best takes on a uh, sports game uh, so this one's the greatest hits but uh, overall, this game is, I think, one of the better Hot Shots games I've played. I still think the one for the Vita is the best, but I would definitely give this one um, at least a 7.5 to 8 range. Definitely is really good, and I would recommend this one for anybody trying to get into the golf genre. Alright, next up is Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. This is one I got for like 99 cents at, um, like it was a grocery store where they were clearing out some of their old games that they had from a previous generation, I guess. Um, this is the one I picked up. I have not played it yet. You can see it's still uh, sealed at the top there. Uh, so hopefully it'll be okay. It just looks kind of like a cheesy um, shooter. All right, next up is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I'm pretty sure there's two editions of this game. I don't know if there's any difference um, in the actual gameplay or the game itself. Or it's just the different covers. Um, but this is the one I've played. I've played about halfway through this game. Um, I never actually beat this game. But for one to play is pretty good. Um, I've always been a fan of 4, personally. I, I just find the story more interesting in 4. But definitely the uh, survival mechanics and a lot of the actual stealth movement is better in this game. I'd probably give it around... I like 8.2. Uh, it's definitely a good game. Again, Metal Gear, just like Hitman, is one of the classic uh, stealth franchises for a region. And I would definitely recommend picking this up if nobody's uh, picked this up yet. Alright, next up is Mortal Kombat Deception. This is one I picked up a very long time ago. Uh, this cost me $5. So this is when uh, these games were getting blown out of like UV games and stuff like that. Um, this is when I was just getting into the fighting games, and uh, Mortal Kombat is one of the ones I played uh, as a kid, so I picked it up, uh, hoping to get into the Mortal Kombat franchise as a whole. And this one was actually a pretty good one. Um, I don't think it was the best. Uh, I think 9 is personally my favorite, um, but there's definitely some good things about this. Uh, the adventure mode's kind of neat. Um, they had a lot of like these chess modes and, co and uh, puzzle modes. They were kind of fun to play with. And the um, fighting itself was still really good. I just... Um, the, the controls and feel for this game definitely developed more with the newer consoles in terms of how the fighting actually feels in my opinion. So I'd give this one like a solid 7. 
Alright, next up is NBA Ballers. As I've said before, sports games are one of my favorite in terms of the arcade ones. And if you want to get into some of the best basketball games out there, it is the Ballers franchise. These are like a more um, realistic street version of um, the NBA street games. Um, so it still takes the arcadey feel, but definitely has some of the um, more realistic uh, mechanics in terms of like the dribbling, the uh, stamina meters, um, the actual moves that they do are more realistic than the street edition, but it's still very arcadey and very fun. It's a great pick up and play game. In my opinion, the first one is still the best in this series, and the series definitely went downhill after this first game. Uh, the first like three were okay, and then it just turned into like absolute garbage. Um, but this one's a must buy in my opinion if anybody likes the arcade sports game. I would definitely give this one a nine. All right, next up is NBA Ballers Phenom. Uh, so this is one that I got when they were blowing out blockbusters when they were closing them down. This is one that I guess was dirtied or damaged because you can see it's in not great condition. But I got it for like, I think it was like a dollar or two dollars. Uh, so it was just one that after playing the first Ballers, I really wanted to pick this up and give this a shot. And in my opinion, I would say it's still decent. Um, they definitely cut down on some of the good modes. Like in uh, NBA Ballers, there was uh, 1v1v1s. Uh, the camera angles were a lot better. And overall, the gameplay just felt a lot smoother in Ballers. And they definitely cut down the customization you can do um, in Phenom. In NBA Ballers, you can create your characters from scratch and have like a roster of like 10 created characters they can make all unique and different builds and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, this one, I would definitely give it like probably a 6. Alright, next up is NBA Street. If any of you watch my uh, collection videos, you know I just uh, picked this one up. So I haven't really played it too much. I've played it a bit, and from what I played, it is definitely really good. Um, if any of you watch my GameCube collection, you know I have the second one on the GameCube, and I'm a huge fan of it. This one definitely keeps up how good the second one was, and I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's a fan of the second one, or any of the street football games, or just wants a really good arcade uh, sports game, kind of like NBA Jam. Overall, I would give this one like an 8. Alright, next up is Ratchet and Clank. Uh, this is the original one, and is actually the only one I've ever fully played through. Uh, I have played through the remake of it on the PS4, um, and I do have the 3 pack collection for the PS3. I just haven't got around to playing it yet. I'm playing through Red Dead at the moment, so that's been eating up a lot of my time. Uh, but the original Ratchet and Clank is one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 2. Um, it is a fantastic game and really got me interested in the platforming genre um, even though platforming is not a huge part of it but the uh, this is like rail grinding uh, there's some platforming in it and the action and weapons are so unique and cool and provide different ways to um, take on each level and the upgrading system is really fun uh, so that one I would give a solid 9. Alright next up is Rumble Racing uh, this one might actually be considered a hidden gem for the console. Uh, this is a very arcadey uh, racing game for the console. And what I like most about it is um, how many different cars there are, and how different all the cars feel. They all have their different stats and looks. And there's like uh, different tiers. So you have like tier one of your car, uh, which wouldn't have all these like uh, flames and the, the upgraded engine and the bumpers here. It would just be like a plain truck. Then you upgrade the second tier, which would be this one. The third one would have like extra um, engine mufflers or anything like that. And uh, there's a bunch of like scaling with your cars. And the racing's a lot of fun. Um, the music's pretty good. And I would definitely uh, recommend this one to anybody who likes the um, arcade racing games. It's, def it's definitely one of the ones that is less talked about than other ones that I've heard of. Uh, so I would actually give this one like an 8.5. Alright, next up is Scooby-Doo Mystery Man. Uh, as a little kid, I was big into the Scooby-Doo um, franchise. 
I definitely enjoyed the cartoons a lot, and I really wanted to pick up the games to see if they were uh, any sort of resemblance of the cartoons. And this one was pretty decent in terms of like the actual like writing and getting the characters right. Um, the gameplay is kind of like a kind of mystery puzzle solving with a little bit of um, stealth mechanics built into it. Uh, it's definitely not the best game in terms of like how you actually play the game. But it's still fun if you're into like the Scooby-Doo characters and stuff like that. They get the feel of the characters pretty decently in this game. Um, overall, I'll give this game like a um, like a six. All right, next up is Speed Kings. And this is one me and my dad actually played a lot. Uh, it's a motorcycle racing game. Definitely tries to take a more simulation approach to motorcycles, which it does pretty well actually. Uh, this game is actually pretty dang hard to get into in terms of actually mastering the racing. I was never any good at this game, um, but it was fun to pick up and play. And the crashes are really fun to do if you just want to like go around and try to take out other riders. Um, that's a lot of fun to do. It's still a decent pick up and play racing game. It's, it's actually just hard to get really into this game in terms of the racing mechanics uh, just because of how hard it is. Uh, overall, I'll give this game like probably a 6.5. Alright, next up is SSX. This is the original one and is the original of probably my favorite franchise of all time. Uh, SSX, for those who don't know, is a snowboarding racing game. Um, it's very arcadey and it's a lot of fun. The main draw to these games are the unique characters, the different play styles. Um, and the really fast racing with uh, the slope styles, with the tricking, and just having some fun while listening to some good music, and knocking down people, and just tearing up all these different tracks that have their unique feels. Like one of these in um, this game is like a pinball track from Japan. This game, while technically in terms of the actual racing and stuff like that, and the mechanics, is definitely not the best game in the series. But uh, in my opinion, the tracks in this game are some of the best out of the series. Uh, so overall, I would give this game probably a solid 9. And it's definitely, I would say, the third best in the series. Um, but it's definitely one worth picking up. Alright, next up is Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Uh, this is one of the more unique Star Wars games, in my opinion. Because it kind of takes a role of one of the very side characters. Um, so this is one that I definitely enjoyed in the fact that it opened up on a lot of uh, Jango Fett's backstory. And it's actually a lot of fun. This game's actually pretty hard um, in terms of the difficulty. Um, I was also a little kid when I played this, so it was hard for me back then. I don't know how hard it would be for me now. Uh, but this game was definitely a lot of fun. I had uh, fun just jetpacking around, blasting people and stuff like that. I've definitely played through the first couple of missions multiple times. And um, I don't think I ever fully beat this game because uh, I think I got stuck on a level. Um, but overall, I'll give this game probably like a 7.7 .7 or 7.8 ish. Alright, next up is Tekken 4. Uh, so, this is a game I haven't played yet. I picked this up for about a $3 at a thrift store. Um, I really like the Tekken 6 that I have on the PS3. So I'm hoping this one's just as good. Uh, I know it's an older version, so it probably won't be as polished. But I'm hoping this one still has some fun combat and some pretty good story mode, uh, like Tekken 6. Alright, next up is Triggerman. So this is a third-person shooter. Um, this is kind of like you're playing as kind of a mafia hitman. And you're kind of following his story on... Uh, kind of protecting his family and trying to figure out who wronged his family. It's a decent game. It's just a basic uh, third person shooter. Uh, nothing too amazing about this game, but it's definitely not a bad game. I'd, I'd probably just give it a five. Like it's an, it's an average game. Um, definitely worth a pickup if you're into the genre and like just jonesing for another third person shooter. But if not, it's just an average game. Alright, next up is The Warriors. 
This is a really fun uh, Rockstar game. Uh, this is based off the movie The Warriors, and it kind of follows it almost scene by scene. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a third person kind of beat em up game, and it has some really good story elements, and it's just a lot of fun to play. Uh, and also, this is a really, really, really good co op game. Uh, me and my friend played through most of this game together, and uh, it was a blast. Uh, it's definitely a little crude if you're not into that, but uh, if you're fine with that and you're looking for a really good co op beat em up game, this is a game I would highly recommend. I'd give this uh, a solid 9. Alright, there you have it. That's my PS2 collection. Uh, it's not one of my biggest collections, but it's one I still pick up a game for here and there. Um, definitely leave some recommendations about games that I should pick up for the PS2. And also let me know if you like the new rating system in the collection videos. Uh, if so, I'm going to apply that to all the 2019 ones when I update my other collections. Um, I'll also do my Wii, Wii U, and Switch collection. I think I'm going to put those together. Uh, and then like my PSP um, and my PS1 collections, I'll put those two together and then I'll get those out next and I'll also do a console collection. So yeah, thanks for watching and remember, everybody has some nerdiness at their core.